Welcome to St. Paul's Wimbledon Parkside service of morning prayer, Friday, 8th of May, as we remember Lady Julian of Norwich, spiritual writer and mystical theologian from 1417 or thereabouts. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm is Psalm 33. The earth is full of loving kindness of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise to the Lord with a lyre. On the ten-string harp, sing his praise. Sing for him a new song. Play skillfully with shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea, as in a water skin, and lays up the deep in his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord, stand in awe of him, all who dwell in the world. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The earth is full of loving kindness of the Lord. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the designs of the people. But the counsels of the Lord shall endure forever, and the designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord and the people he has chosen for his own. The earth is full of loving kindness of the Lord. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the children of earth. From where he sits enthroned, he took his gaze, he turns his gaze, on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. 
No king is saved by the might of his host. No warrior delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength it cannot save. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait in hope for his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our hope and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name we have put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have set our hope on you. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Feed your people, Lord, with your holy word, and free us from the emptiness of our wrongful desires, that we may sing the new song of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 35, beginning with the 20th verse. Then all the congregation of the Israelites withdrew from the presence of Moses, and they came, everyone whose heart was stirred, and everyone whose spirit was willing, and brought the Lord's offering to be used for the tents of the meeting and for all its service and for the sacred vestments. So they came, both men and women, all who were of willing hearts, brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and pendants, all sorts of gold objects, everyone bringing an offering of gold to the Lord. And everyone who possessed blue or purple or crimson yarn, or fine linen, or goat's hair, or tanned ram skins, or fine leather, brought them. Everyone who could make an offering of silver or bronze brought it as the Lord's offering. And everyone who possessed acacia wood or any use in the work brought it. All the skillful women spun with their hands and brought what they had spun in blue and purple and crimson yarns and fine linen. All the women whose hearts moved them to use their skill spun the goat's hair. And the leaders brought onyx stones and gems to be set in the ephod of the breastplate and the breastplate and spices and oil for the light and for the oil anoint and for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women, whose heart made them willing to bring anything for the work that the Lord had commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a free will offering to the Lord. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has called by name Bazalal, son of Uri, son of Hur, and the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with divine spirit, with skill, intelligence, and knowledge in every kind of craft, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, in every kind of craft. And he has inspired him to teach, both him and Oholiab, son of Ahiamash, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with the skill to do every kind of work done by an artisan, or by a designer, or by an embroiderer in blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and in fine linen, or by a weaver, by any sort of artisan or skilled designer. Bezalel and Oholia, and everyone skilled to whom the Lord has given skill and understanding to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary, shall work in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. Moses then called Bezalel 
and Aholiah, and every one skilled to whom the Lord had given skill, every one whose heart was stirred to come to do the work. And they received from Moses all the free will offerings that the Israelites had brought for doing the work in the sanctuary. They still kept bringing him farewell offerings every morning, free will offerings every morning, so that all the artisans who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary came, each from the task being performed, and said to Moses, The people are bringing much more than enough to do the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and the word was proclaimed throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing it. For what they had already brought was more than enough to do all the work. This is the end of the first reading. The Canticle In your unfailing love, O Lord, you led the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. With the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you led the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary that your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. The second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, beginning with the 14th verse. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding area. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as it was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet, I- of the prophet Isaiah was given him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to be, bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, that the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow and Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. 
and none of them was cleansed except for Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the end of the second reading. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? The Benedictus. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Alleluia. As we come to our time of prayers, we take a moment of silence to reflect on this day before us and its tasks and offer them to the Lord. In the presence of God, the giver of all life, let us lift our hearts and pray. We pray for all who are training for ministry in the church and for all who teach them. May they grow in wisdom and humility and be increasingly filled with the life you have won for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all areas of bureaucracy which frustrate and delay the course of useful action. for areas where anarchy undermines stability, for areas of political corruption, that whatever is good may flourish and grow. So that evil is rendered powerless and overthrown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are engaged to be married or are newly married. We pray for those coping with family problems, difficult circumstances, or bereavement. We 
and pray that God's loving presence dispel all fear and bring life and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that your calming reassurance will bring peace of mind and spirit to those worried about the future, those dreading some difficult event, and those who are frightened of dying. We pray for all who are involved in our healthcare system, for doctors, for nurses, researchers, first aid responders, we pray for those working in pharmacies, as well as our essential businesses, such as food shops and others who keep our society functioning while putting themselves at risk. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for all the, the life and example of all who have lived, worked, and died in the joy of your service. May we one day share with them eternal life in your presence. Now we take a moment to offer our own prayers to the Lord. with our hearts full of anxiety for the safety of the world, we cry to the Lord for protection for the healthy, courage for the frightened, consolation for the bereaved, wisdom for the doctors, strength for the carers, good news for the poor, and in the goodness of God's mercy, an end to the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, a prayer in lockdown. The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked. Ever-present God, be with us in our isolation. Be close to us in our distancing. Be healing in our sickness. Be joy in our sadness. Be light in our darkness. Be wisdom in our confusion. Be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar, that when the doors reopen, we may, with the zeal of Pentecost, inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness to an emerging world. <laughs> Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bringing all of our prayers together in the words of the Collect. Most holy God, the ground of our beseeching, who through your servant Julian 
revealed the wonders of your love. Grant that as we are created in your nature and restored by your grace, our wills may be so made one with yours that we may come to see you face to face and gaze on you forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.